And we are live. How's it going, guys? Hope you're having an excellent morning. Just an excellent morning. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to go back and edit this video and put a timestamp of exactly when this guide starts because we are going to step by step of exactly what your first 66 days are supposed to be for data science. This is going to be the Little Leagues. This is going to be an entirely new beginner if you only have about 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day. So something that you could do in your commute, something you can do in the shower, probably not in the shower, but something that you can do easily. And we're going to make it broken down into the simplest components. My name is Andrew. I'm a data scientist in Silicon Valley. This is Professor Meatball. Good morning, you guys. Hector, Frankson, Shruti, my fave three. Let me pull up a screen for you guys so that you can see what it looks like for me to uh, show you this note capture, display capture, big screen. There it is. Let's put it to the back so you guys can see my face. Hopefully. Why is it so big? Oh, that's why. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to cover the ideas that a lot of people nowadays are trying to get a six-figure salary, uh, but they're not sure exactly how. They're not. They have a feeling that it's going to involve a mentor of some sort. They have a feeling that it's going to require education of some sort. So. Uh, if you've seen my zero dollar data science bible i tell you the first 21 days and i'm going to show you guys exactly uh i'm sticking to my guns that's still the first 21 days if you're playing the 30 minute to you know uh, 30 minutes after work kind of l learning style learning as you go requires you to stay on track and it means that you need someone like me to yell at you and make sure that you're doing your stuff so i'm happy to do that so the very first 66 the first 21 days of data is the Kaggle micro course. Let's just go straight into it. Will this get bigger if I zoom in? Yes, it will. And what does that look like? Well, let's just go and search Kaggle micro course. You notice that I search a lot of D and D stuff. <laughs> Learn Python data viz pandas and more and there we are beautiful prestigious let's move around Chiran hello okay hello mr. Chiran or Ms or mrs or officer officer Chiran is what I'm gonna go with final answer so these are the first courses that I want you to type with me we're gonna go to Python we're going to go to pandas, and we're going to go to, uh, what did I say, data visualization? I believe so. Python, pandas, data visualization. I'm basically going to copy and paste exactly the first 21 modules of these three micro courses so that you can break down your first 21 days. Now, that's easy mode. So well, I'm going to do an experiment. Which were, how many of you identify as bosses, like as, as, uh, as boss mode data science learners? Because if you want to really compress your 66 days into just 21 days, there is a way to learn way beyond all of this, all of your 66 days into 21 days. You're going to have to spend at least a few hours a day. And I'm going to do is I'm going to live stream later today for you bosses in boss mode so that we can... Uh, we can go back. Let me just check my sound real quick. Six days. Perfect. Uh, hopefully the streaming quality is better. I lowered the bit rate. <laughs> uh, not that I know what that means. Um, so what, what, is the, what do these Kaggle microcourses look like? Well, let's look at the first Python. Actually, let's look at the fourth Python. Give you a sense of what it looks like mid-course. Lists in Python represent ordered sequences of values. So now you're, you're looking at something called a interactable notebook. Uh, this is a Jupyter notebook that you can play with on the actual platform. So it's very cool 
because one of the things that you need to remember is that this is something that you're going to be working with in the very beginning and not having to install it, not having to play around with all of the different uh, formatting in the very beginning is going to be really helpful. So what do you do on your 22nd day of school? Day 22. You're going to have to have your own version of Python now. I know, I, wild. It's your first day of your fourth week and you already need uh, some Python. Uh, but uh, all jokes aside, the best way to be able to manage your environment and not have to go crazy over the different kinds of packages that you might need is to go on my channel because I still have one of the best uh, introductions out there into order to install your Python environment. And it's going to be my third video right here. It's going to be... This video you will follow along with me, Professor Beatball. Eight minutes of... Skip the intro if you want, so then you'll only have like five minutes. Py, go to python.org to download this specific version of Python. Go to Miniconda and download that specific version of Miniconda. Set up your environments in the command line. I know you can do it. I set up both PC and Mac requirements in this video. And then... Uh, set up Conda Forge so that you can install new environments as needed uh, and as uh, the packages that you need so that you don't have to, uh, you know, flop around and get it wrong. So that's day, day 22. When you have uh, finished that and you have your environment, right? We are still only going 15 minutes a day. And if you want to go to see the boss mode where we do an hour a day and we'd have to come back later for the next live stream, uh, I want you to be able to start playing around with the first project because it's project-based learning. You want to be able to have as many projects as possible. Shruti says, following 21 days, already done with Python pandas introduction with ML. Perfect. Uh, this is going to be, the next part of this video is going to be for you because I'm going to bridge the 21 days to the 66 days of data. Joseph Jones, Wowzers, Andrew, so you are suggesting that I don't spend $11,000 on a six month data science mentor led bootcamp offered by Springboard? Rhetorical question. Um, I'm, not suggesting, uh, I'm not suggesting that that's not good for some people. I'm suggesting that there is a certain uh, level of self development and self perseverance that you can build for yourself and that I'm gonna about to show you right now. Um, I'm not trying to steal the bread out of any mentor's mouths, but uh, ultimately this is going to be uh, something that they are going to hold your hands on anyway, or a, worse, a, upper, a higher education uh, professor is going to send you these links and you're going to have to learn them anyway online, because uh, their lectures are definitely not going to tell you what to do. The next thing is to how, how did you do your first uh, data science project? Well, let me just search that data science project from scratch. Some of you know where this is going. Oh, Kenji? <laughs> data science Hello, everyone, project from Ken scratch. Here. If you're new to my channel, I'm a data scientist. That this is from April 3rd, 2020. It's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, one of the most complete data science projects out there. It's one of Ken's most popular video. And it is a seven part series where you are going to uh, build out a data pipeline from scratch, which is the first part. Building out your own data immensely, immensely makes you a better candidate than uh, not having having data from Kaggle or some other like non data set, or basically like a toy data set. So being able to uh, work with real code that you'll be able to then upload to GitHub, being able to have real uh, first hands-on uh, experience with Ken's code will then be able to have you pivot off of it to be able to uh, play with Selenium and Beautiful Soup on a different platform. If you're, if you're st we're still in the Little League, so uh, ask me questions in the, in the live chat or you can easily bring a, um, bring a question down in the comments of this video or you could uh, send me a message on Discord or Instagram. Jaron says, Kenji definitely uh, getting into our live stream. Hmm, deaf sus. Uh, yeah, how did he get here? <laughs> but to be honest, uh, Kenji and Data Professor has 
some of the best stuff. And we're trying to break down our first few days. So this is definitely what I would suggest for the 23rd day. So the 23rd day, start on this video, uh, this series. And for the, for the time being, how many videos is this? So this is gonna take, like I promised, like 15 to 30 minutes, right? So this is 15 to 30 minutes, this is 15 to 30 minutes. This is starting to not become it. So if we can break this down into two parts, this part becomes uh, two parts, um, this part becomes two parts. So that's three extra videos. So that's actually just 10 days. So that's day 23 to day 33, 32. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, build your own project. Build your first project. Follow along with Ken, especially if you, you're not 100% sure uh, what's happening. <laughs> Um, because the most important part is that if you code alongside him, you're going to be able to start asking questions about your own debugging. Because versioning is going to be is going to be a nightmare, right? It, this video is only eight months old, and yet there's going to be a ton of versioning issues right from the, from the get-go. What's up, Mohammed? So, the main point of this this section of your progress is to start blogging. Right? You want to be able to uh, build out your projects based on stuff you learn. And, the, when, and your first blog uh, topics is, I didn't know blank, right? Or I, I found a more efficient way to blank. I wish I read out these blogs. Right. I wish that I was actively learning on my data science journey and then putting it on Medium, um, sharing it on LinkedIn. Try to do this once a day. Right. It's part of the journey. It might feel like the same uh, Facebook, Instagram journey where you are just trying to get Facebook or Instagram clout. Uh, it's not. You're not trying to bring clout to yourself for fake internet points. You're actually just building out a fully structured SEO approach to your profile. Because ultimately, employers need to be able to find your profile, all right? So how do you get that to happen? Well, you need to be able to build out the first thing that people see when they search your name is your blog, is something that you can control. So that's one of the, that's one of the most important things that uh, I wish my master's program told me uh, something that I've talked to Franks and uh, Francisco about uh, during a one-on-one -on -one call. It's something, it's really important, right? Uh, nearly as important as smashing that like button on this video, but uh, I would say most importantly, you are building out this sense that you have built your own project out. Because once this project goes to your GitHub, you can, you can reference that it was Kenji's starter code, but it is your project now, right? It is your code because you scraped it. You're the one who is connecting the back end. And now, in parallel, as Kenji brings you through the course and teaches you how to implement machine learning models, you need to now under go back and understand how they work. So that's why I would suggest um, in your, what is it? This is the fifth week. In your fifth week, start learning machine learning. So I would say intro to machine learning first. This is gonna be a full week and then machine, le uh, machine learning explainability. So this is gonna be five days. So being able to build out uh, these, this realistic understanding of how partial data and how uh, data sets function and how this, oh wow, this is the Gini index. Um, very cool. The, uh, being able to understand exactly how data sets work in the real world is going to be something that you want to push to the end. It's kind of like math, right? People ask me how much math. Um, ideally, don't do any math in your first 66 days of data. Uh, this is just a personal preference, at least if you're playing 30 minutes a day, because you shouldn't uh, overwhelm yourself with too much theoretical work before you actually get into the practical. That's something that Ken and I agree on. Um, Shruti says, Kenji and oh, Andrew, okay, this is going amazing. <laughs> uh, Muhammad says, hello, Andrew. Oh, I already, I already read that. Uh, Shruti says, what's your view on uh, Google Collab? 
Collab is fine. It's getting way better, right? It has one of the added benefits that it has a dedicated Google team working on it. So like TensorFlow, um, that means it's going to have faster updates. It's going to have uh, growth. Right versus Jupyter Notebook and Lab, which in my opinion are starting to get bogged down with a bunch of bloatware and not really functioning as it should on, on MacBooks as it used to. Could just be my MacBook, but uh, I'm a data set of one. My opinion is Collab is great. Um, usually it's better to learn how to use Git, uh, at least for industry. But eventually we might all move to, to Google Collab, who knows. So this is going to be uh, day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 more days. 33 to 44. I can count. I think that's right. Yeah. So. Let me make this a little cleaner. So we're going to do this micro course, this one, and this one. And then down here, we're going to do this micro course. So by the end of this, you're, you're most likely going to have a boot camps level of knowledge of actually useful stuff <laughs> because oftentimes boot camps will teach you like R uh, and and that's not as applicable so you like you don't want to learn some stuff that is like not directly applicable to the interview process uh, oh and by the way yeah now around this time we're gonna start working on the interview process which is being able to crack uh, the data science interview. And remember, if, you, if you're if you curious on how to start this faster, this is, uh, this is how I would learn if I only had 30 minutes a day. If I had at least an hour and a half a day, I would definitely start on lead code on day one. So we would go lead code. Lead code, leadcode.com forward slash plum set from forward slash database. That is uh, the king of kings, the, the greatest uh, that's ever been. Day 45, seventh, seventh week, beginning of the seventh week, or the end of the sixth week. Sort by difficulty, do an easy question, uh, do two easy questions, right? Make sure you, it took a streak. Make sure you do an easy question every single darn day whenever you start lead code. Never stop, never falter. Charan uh, uh, says, for collab, do we need to install Pandas and other packages? No, I think Collab, and I don't, I'm not super fluent with Collab because it's kind of like, I would say it's like the toy version of Jupyter. Um, collab, oh, it's the Google Docs version of, of it's kind of like how Google Doc makes the Microsoft Excel, sorry, Microsoft Word, very simple. Collab makes Jupyter super simple too. Not that Jupyter was complex to begin with. Um, and Franklin says R. So the so here's how lead code works. Uh, you go here, and you look at the question, and then this completely free terminal uh, allows you to submit your question, your answer. Now, one of the things is that oh darn, but what if I don't have the solution? Sometimes it's grayed out, right? No solution for this question, or perhaps it's under a a, uh, a paywall. There's always a solution in the discussion, right? In fact, all of these are solutions. No one ever posts anything other than solutions. Um, and you can see how good the solutions are based on upvotes or views. So here's someone's solution, MySQL uh, solution optimal. Oh god, is this easy? Well, it, certainly, it might be easy, but it's certainly like ugly. Paste it. And then in the very beginning, sign in. In the very beginning, you're going to have to uh, this is free. Um, in the beginning, you, you're going to have to paste someone else's code and just watch how it works. You can see here's how I solve through a lead code question. Uh, let's press submit to make sure that it runs. It runs. OK, so that's someone else's code. Obviously, it runs. Uh, so that's something that we have to start playing with first. What you can do is, can I command comment out this code? C uh, command and then forward slash, or the question mark for max, 
or control forward slash or question mark for PCs. That's how you comment out code. Something that <laughs> I've, I've taught numerous data scientists <laughs> in the past. Um, when you walk through this code, you're going to want to be able to start just selecting stuff. So let's select, uh, this is a terrible question to pick. But let's just select DID. Right? So run this code. Oh. Oh, yeah. No comma. Wrong answer. Well, we know it's a wrong answer. But we're, what we see is that this gets the output uh, headers. Oh, you guys can't see the output. Oh, one sec. I'll be over here for a sec. OK, so we see that the output here is headers ID values 1, 2, 3. So all this did was get the distinct uh, department IDs. OK, and then we start building off of there. If we left join on this table, so command forward slash to, co to re-comment or uncomment, and then we, now we see uh, something that might happen. Let's get rid of distinct. Run this code. Ah, now we have one, two, three, one, one. Ah. See, now we're learning what left joins do. Okay. This is basically the, the easiest way without setting up your own my, uh, SQL server to learn how SQL works because these data sets already exist here. So this is not the perfect one. You could just go back and uh, find a different problem. Uh, Muhammad says, I want to become an AI researcher. I am 16 years old. <laughs> How do I start? Uh, you are aspiring to uh, greatness, my friend. How do you become an AI researcher at 16? Um, well, consider that most people that do heavy duty research have a PhD, right? Because that's, and that kind of makes it easy for you. Uh, once you get a bachelor's in something technical, uh, then go into either directly a PhD or if you, uh, it, I, I, I don't have a PhD, so that's why I, I feel like it's rough to say that a master's is a consolation prize um, to, or like a buffer before your PhD. I would be careful because I don't want to lead you astray. He really loves NLP machine learning. Um, you are you are in the right field, I would say. You're still you're still doing well. I would say the best way to build out NLP is with Kenji's project. So start here, uh, because when you have this Glassdoor data, you're going to be able to do a lot of NLP with it. Um, keep coming back and mess and commenting and messaging me for more uh, about what I want to say about that. But for now, that's what I'm going to say. Um, and these questions do get hard. So let's look at trips and users. Love this question. Love it. Um, I'm about to do, I'm about to put out, like this video if you think I should put out a, uh, a video of me solving this question. This is one of the hard questions on, on, um, on lead code. But it's essentially uh, a question that you can, like always, pull up an answer from the comment section and then digest it here. Now, ultimately, you don't want to, why is this all commented out? Uh, ultimately, you don't want to do this for every single question. You want to tackle it first. And once you spend about like 20 minutes tackling it, stop, look at the answer, and then try to tackle it again. Always try to tackle it from the ground up without uh, looking at any code, right? Refresh your mind, go for a walk, and then uh, some of these code doesn't even have the right syntax. Sharon says, I am definitely using this for SQL because, as I said, SQL is dry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dry. NLP is part of data science? Yes, natural language processing is part of data science. But that is kind of like saying, um, you know, is blankety blank part of IT? Or is telecommunications part of IT? Uh, or is customer service part of IT? Is this a different, oh, it's a different SQL, that's why. So some SQLs have different uh, syntaxes. Careful not to learn. I would say don't learn Oracle or SQL Server if you can help it from the beginning. 
they're not that different. <laughs> you tried to, you tried to submit too many times. Uh, Muhammad, what I'm trying to do is show you how to how I use lead code because that's going to be something that you want to be able to start playing around with your day 40, 50, 45. So it's day 45 to uh, the end, do one of these a day. And we're not quite done. So we're going to we're going to keep doing other stuff. Day 45, I'm just going to have you um, practice around with how to use lead code. But you're not done. You can't just learn uh, you know, science, <laughs> sorry, you can't just learn uh, Leap Code, SQL, and Python and call yourself a data scientist. You actually do need, now need the math. Um, let's see. Rosa, good morning, Andrew. I try to do one Leap Code question a day, but sometimes I still struggle to solve the problems. Can you explain your, th your thought process when tackling a question? I do the algorithms and data structures, though, so I haven't tried SQL questions. Good point, Rosa. Uh, let's do algorithms. Okay, I think that's an easy one. So, Rosa, I'm just I'm gonna walk through exactly how I would solve this question. You are given an MXN integer grid accounts where accounts IJ is the no, amount of money the ith customer. You guys can't read that. It'd be good if you could. There you go. First things first, code in Python. Uh, e even software engineers are coding in Python nowadays. It's just way better. <laughs> Python three. If you're not sure what the difference is yet. Um, just know that Python is is sometimes, not even all the time anymore, referring to Python 2. Uh, and Python 3 is the one that you should be using. You are given uh, MXN integer grid accounts where account IJ is the amount of money the ith customer has in the jth bank. <laughs> Return the wealth that the richest customer has. A customer's wealth is the amount of money they have in all of their bank accounts. The richest customer is the customer that has the maximum wealth. Okay. Oh, I have to define a, uh, so I have to define a solution. So um, we're taking a detour because I really want to show you how to use lead code. Um, you only use it for SQL, but for now I'm going to show you how I do it for Python. So the most important thing to remember is that uh, you have the answers right here if you ever get lost, but spend at least 15 to 20 minutes on it. Uh, Andrew says, do you plan on sharing this doc on Discord? Heck yeah. I'll share it with my patrons first, and then I'll share it with all, all the rest of you guys in the week. But the most important thing is, if this was too easy, if this was, uh, if you are over this by miles, if this is baby mode, I want you to come back for uh, another live stream later today. It's an experiment. I may be testing when to do live streams because this time is good for IST for Indian Standard Time. Uh, I want to be able to accommodate people who are off work, right? Uh, so I'm gonna do it at. I'm gonna do another live stream at three. I gotta look at my calendar real quick. Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna do another live stream today, December 10th at four. Four is a good time. So 4 p.m. Uh, that's 7 p.m. for you, Francisco. So I think that's going to be good. And at that, and that's just going to be a really fast wrap-up. Oh, you know what? I want to do it before it gets dark. I want to do it at 2. So 2 p.m. PSD. It's going to be a really fast wrap-up of how you can accomplish this if you wanted to do it in 21 days. All 66 days of data in 21 days. I feel like that's going to be like level 3. There you go. Uh, everyone said thanks. It's 9.30 here in, in India. It's 9.30? I always thought it was 8.30. Okay. Well, egg on my face. Um, so here's how I would solve this question. So first thing I would consider is wealth. Well, wealth is, wealth is exactly what we're looking for. And we're going to try to find out which of these three integers has uh, which of these three indexes has the money in the bank? So I, sorry, J, I J is the amount of money that the ith customer has in the jth bank. Okay, so I, okay, I see. So this is how much money the first person has. I see now, okay. 
So it's basically, so this is actually, this is explained in a terrible way, <laughs> um, but this essentially is, uh, this is a nested list, and each nested list has a, has a total amount of money a certain person has, and then the outer list is just um, the total number of uh, people that there are. That's kind of easy. This is just a, um, I would do this in a list comprehension, but just to solve it for you guys, I would imagine that uh, you want to be able to have like a money variable, right? So like max money. Whenever it's something about max, you probably want to keep something like a, ma a max money variable. And then you want to be able to start counting each person's money. So the easiest way is a, uh, is a nested for loop. So and it's okay if you don't understand this, it's okay. All right, you don't, so I have rarely seen Python questions and when, on interviews, and even when I do, uh, they're really easy. They're as easy as this one. So for i, since they're calling it i, yeah, i is the person. So for i in accounts, and then uh, for j in accounts, add that to the money. So for, so for each i, we need uh, i money. And now we i money equals i money plus zero, or you can do plus equals zero. Oh, not plus zero, plus j, because j is the amount of money. So actually, let's make this easier. So for person in accounts, and then for uh, bank um, bank amount in account in person. plus bank amount, i money plus bank amount, okay. We use i and j to confuse you in computer science. Um, no, it's just, a, it's, it's easier uh, to read, but for now I'm gonna write it verbosely so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, and so now, at the end, if i money, whoop, if i money greater than max money, then that's the new max money. Max money equals I money, and we have to remember which. Uh, hold on, wait. Oh no, that's it. We just want to. We just want to return the maximum wealth. Usually, if you want to note which person this is, you would have to assign another variable. But for now, you don't have to. Um, and now, what else? That's it, actually. So that's it's really easy. And then at the end of this, you just return max money. So Rosa, uh, one of the most important things, uh, it's nine o'clock in Pakistan, cool. Rosa, the one, one of the most important things is that I had to think of reverse engineer what I was trying to do first. So I had to do summing up each of these and finding out which of these nested loops, uh, nested lists is the largest. So this is hopefully gonna give me the solution. I'm not gonna run the code, I'm just gonna submit it. Success. Okay, <laughs> um, I feel good. So this is something that you should be able to solve in like really, really fast, right? Uh, a nested for loop is always the worst in terms of efficiency. So is there a way to make this faster? Probably with a lambda. Uh, Charan says the beauty of education system is teachers can use and I J, but students dare use those variables. <laughs> Thank you for so much for doing this. I also think most questions are terribly written. Yes, so true. Um, so here's, uh, just for fun, I'm gonna do this with, uh, with list comprehension. Can I do this with list comprehension? Let me think about this. Return max. Um, some J, hold on, some, and it's another list comprehension here, J for J, no, I don't have to do that, I just have to sum uh, I, max sum of I, so yeah, this doesn't have to be a list. So max sum of i. It's not dry. Computer science is not dry. I promise. For i in accounts, does that do it? 
comments it out like I showed you guys earlier. Command forward slash. Oh, it did. Okay, so this is also the answer. <laughs> so all this code um, amounts to this list comprehension. <laughs> um, there are many ways to do it in computer science. Uh, so that's, that, that's the fun thing. So now, okay, so Rosa, to answer your question, uh, you want to go to the discussion, and you see that there's also these, all these Java solutions in C++. Uh, ignore it. Look at Python. And here's, here's what he did. Max wealth for account and accounts. Max sum account max wealth, and then return max wealth. Right? Uh, you would then copy his code and then run each piece of it one by one. Try to find a question that doesn't have a class in it if you want to just play around with the, the variables themselves. But for now, this is a good way to start playing around with uh, taking out certain pieces and seeing how that changes things. Uh, she also thinks that questions are terribly written. I agree. OK, so if your last uh, 20 days, so date 46 to day 66, you have one project under your belt. You've been blogging about it. You've been creating, um, you've been creating your GitHub portfolio, right? You are now ready to start uh, testing yourself. And the most important thing about testing yourself is now you have to, one, Either continue on with the 30 minutes a day, which is um, testing yourself with uh, mock interviews uh, or real interviews if you try to get interviews just for the practice, which is totally a valid uh, tactic. Or you could easily just you know, start building out a better sense of your uh, skills by looking online on YouTube and just searching uh, interview questions. So let's do that real quick. See all my subscriptions real quick. Uh, did you know Airbnb is IPOing today? Crazy. So data science interview questions. Really, honestly, half my job is just Googling. Um, yeah, just kidding, but where am I? So three types of data science question, interview questions. Joma doesn't actually go through an interview question. Uh, Jay does a great guide, but also he doesn't really go through any interview questions. 10 data science interview questions with answers. This might be the answer. This might be one of them. Uh, Tina does a good series. These are all friends of mine. Oh, look, here's mine. Um, I actually do go through an interview question. <laughs> so, so that's the thing, right? You have to try to pick out um, like an actual question and see if you can answer it. Jay does an a uh, excellent series here. Here's a Netflix machine learning question. Here's a Facebook product investigation mock interview. Uh, these are the kind of questions that you want to be able to answer. Let's see if this one's actually the thing. questions will test you on one. What are the assumptions, assumptions for, for linear regression? Great. These are actually solid questions. But how would you be able to know uh, the answers to these questions? Well, uh, if you did a little bit of machine learning, you should have a, good, a better sense of it. But you can always do my favorite guide, uh, which is, I think it was like 50 machine learning questions. Yeah, 51 with from Springboard. And then finally, I would do um, machine learning algorithms in like six minutes. What was it? Four, six minutes. Oh, yeah, here we go. All machine learning models explain in six minutes. Nice. This article uh, is, is the cheat sheet for all. Uh, Start practicing interviews. So use this cheat sheet. Use this too. How about actually? Let's, how about let's separate this out. So day forty-six to day forty-seven. Do these two. Really, really understand it. Really understand it because you want to be able to uh, answer all these questions. And then day forty-eight. Start practicing interviews. So how do you do that? Well, you can go on Data Science J. And uh, look at his interviews. Here's a free plug for you, Data Science Jay. Love the guy. He grinds hard. Here's my interview question. Sure, let's put Tina's in there too. 
Um, but then the most important part is that you want to be able to have a real person. So if you don't have any friends, relatable, um, go to Pramp, and that is a way to start setting up actual mock interviews with actual people. Start practicing is free. I believe it is free. Uh, and you can also find mentors like, um, like Sharp as Minds. However, you don't need to, I would want to assume. Charan says, is it okay for me to go for 66 days of data if I don't have deep knowledge of data science and algo? I know basics though. Yeah, the, you, you don't need it. This is what the first um, like three weeks are for. All right, you're gonna build it out with the first three weeks. Andrew, you see this Andrew guy in the video list? He makes dope content. <laughs> he does, he, he makes bombastic, he does live streams. He's, uh, he's a cool dog. He's a cool dog. He feels tired, I'm just gonna put him, bring him on my, so tired. He's so tired. He just wants breakfast. He just wants breakfast like all of us. We all want breakfast. Okay. So I'm going to say that that's going to be an entire week because it honestly is. So 55. I think I'm counting wrong. 54. Because if you're not practicing your interviews, then you're gonna be in trouble um, when the interviews actually roll around. So the most important thing is that you actually do practice as many interviews as possible. Get the real interview um, under your belt. Okay. Um, let's see. Some real data science content. Uh, remember last week when I did personal finance content? I'm still doing personal finance content, just in case you're here for that. Uh, let me see what it's like on Pramp. Okay, I have the join Pramp. Uh, I don't want to join Pramp right now. <laughs> Felipe Concalves, Con Consalves, uh, Ricardo Canales, and then Sherzat. Uh, meatball, don't lick my computer. Shruti says, what's my LinkedIn account? I don't keep my LinkedIn account secret, but I just rather would not have it out there. So message me on Discord, and I'm happy to give it to you. Uh, Oh, interesting. Oh, you can be the interviewer and the interviewee. Oh, you can swap roles. That's cool. That's a, this is a good platform. I, I kind of like it. Because the most important thing is that you don't know how you sound to someone else. Um, so you can, you can be as good in the brain as uh, you know, the smartest Joe in the world. But if you're not good at communicating, then you're going to mess it up. And you don't want to mess it up. You want to be a cool kid. That doesn't mess things up. So, so Pramp, I've, uh, I've been told, is incredibly helpful. Uh, it got Jeff Lee. Uh, I keep using Jeff as an example, but it really did help Jeff. So that's one of the things that you can work with. You can also practice around with um, uh, just by yourself if you have an active imagination. Play an interview, like a video interview, of either Jay's videos or my videos, and then just kind of like stop halfway and then try to answer the questions and see how, it, how well you match up. Yeah, Shruti says I already here. She already follows me. Shruti, do you think you're gonna win the uh, the Kenji leaderboard? Because that's a it's a question that I that I'm wondering. Because uh, I'm wondering if I should even compete. I don't know what the prizes are, but I just wanted to I wanted to show Ken some love. Okay, day fifty five. So at this rate, you have been blogging every single day. You've been doing lead code questions every single day since uh, at least ten days ago. Meatball, <laughs> you okay? Um, and you've been able to uh, build out your interviewing skills. Now is the most important part, which is to start building out your network. Now remember, come back um, at 2 p.m. and I'm gonna do another live stream about the fast mode of this. Uh, your live network on LinkedIn is going to be one of the more important parts of your entire process. Go on LinkedIn, here, I'm, this is gonna be a talking head portion. portion. Go on LinkedIn, find a second and tertiary connections, and then ask them about their product, right? Become a core user of whatever product they're trying to sell. Become a Facebook core user, become a, um, a Tinder core user, uh, become someone who builds out 
value, not just in uh, the sense that, hey, I want a job from you, but you also someone that wants to build out value in a sense that this is a relationship that I want to foster. Everybody wants to be a friend of the data scientist. Trust me, this is, you are, you are, even if you are an aspiring data scientist, you are cushioning up to the right table. Because the main idea is that like, if someone wants to be like an actor in LA, uh, it's gonna be a lot harder to help you. It's a completely different ask. But if you say, hey, I wanna be a data scientist, you're essentially saying, hey, I wanna be the president of the United States in terms of the, uh, in terms of the industry respect that there is. So approach with that idea. Say, I have the, I have to put in the work I'm about. I'm aspiring to be a data scientist. Um, one day I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the greatest. But today I'm just gonna come with you with a, a heartfelt question as a core user, and as someone who's a data scientist in the market. Uh, not only is this gonna build out your skills and your network, but most importantly, it's going to pay off like 10 years down the line when one of your, when one of your, like, peers, someone who was on the same level as you, maybe grew faster or. Uh, grew in a different lateral direction and then invites you to start a company with them or build out something. That's how it happened to my dad actually with a, um, he was a chemist for a really long time. And he uh, be recently in the last like 10 years became a business person because uh, a student of his, he was a PhD candidate, assistant professor, uh, asked him to start a company. And he said, you know, Dr. Mao, I would love for you to, to join me on this. And there you go. The rest is history. Uh, Charan says, uh, Shuchi says, that project is dope. Yeah, it is. Charan says, but one basic question, how do we approach? Yeah, great question. The, the, the main point is to try and emulate successful approaches before, all right? Um, you can build your own, but cultural differences are always going to be inherent that you don't understand. So let's, uh, let's copy from someone. Just like code, there's no shame in copying when you're a student. So how to write code. Uh, ooh how to get code email that actually gets read. Hey, this is a good time to plug. Um, Whether you're a coach. Gr grow with Will. So what does Will say? Uh, let's see, domain salesman. Uh, did you know Google had to pay thousands of dollars? Probably not that. Um, I've been generating inbound leads uh, like blah, blah, blah over the last year. I'd love to talk to you about a few channels and strategies that are working best for my clients. That's a great one. This is a great one. I've been doing blankety blank data science for the last blankety years. Uh, I would love to talk to you about blah, blah, blah. Are you free? To, uh, are you open to 10 free leads uh, in five minutes of your time? Maybe not that, maybe like an, uh, just a question of like, are you open for a virtual coffee uh, that builds out something about uh, that I can help talk about a pain point of yours, right? Virtual coffee, pain point, just pepper that in somehow. But mainly, um, remove the formality. Be respectful, but remove the formality. Don't say, hello, sir, um, to who it may concern. Uh, don't, don't make it sound like you are a bot, right? Don't make it sound like you're someone who has a language barrier. Uh, even if you do, make it sound, make the code email sound as approachable as possible. Uh, Grow with Will is awesome. I don't know why he doesn't get a, a ton of views because his his channel should be blowing up. I'm gonna say, uh, Hey Will, I'm live streaming your channel right now. Oh, look, I already commented on this before. <laughs> okay, so start reaching out, and the and how many people should you reach out to? Well. It's easy to chunk by, oh, let's put Will's daily. Start cold emailing. Third door technique, the briefcase technique. Um, what did I say? Oh, yeah. The approachable, you guys can't read that. Um, avoid cultural hurdles, right? Just try to be able to, like as normal as possible. Maybe do a little research about culturally what the people say. 
<laughs> Shruti doesn't know why she's on the board. Shruti, I think you know. You, you're very engaging in the, in the community and we do appreciate it. Uh, be approachable, avoid cultural hurdles. Um, and build relationships at last. That's something that I need to follow myself because um, recently I've gotten so many uh, one-on-ones with potential mentees. Um, and previously, all I do is just like, hey, the, the, like, do you want to do an income share? Hey, does this work? And then if it doesn't work, then I'm like, okay, well, best of luck. And then that's it, right? But that's not a relationship that's gonna last. At the very least, if nothing is about to come out of this phone call, say, you know, this is, this is great. Can we check in like, you know, maybe every quarter or like once a year? Because I would love to just keep in touch with your life. Imagine the amount of marginal effort you need to do in order to just place a bet on someone. Just say that you are someone that I want to keep in my life because you inspire me or because you're working on cool stuff. Or because, like, you know, you can be honest. Selfishly, one day we might do something together. And I don't want that bridge to be burned just in case. Perfect, right? The world is not, especially if you work in the world of coaching and the world of learning and data science growth, uh, everyone is growing, right? Everyone's a startup in themselves. That's something to remember and consider. Okay. Uh, that's, this is the most important part, is that you want to be able to incorporate this into your journey. And 15, 30 minutes a day ends up, if you've already done all of this, and you haven't started reaching out to people, do it. Chunking it up into company by company, a dozen um, reach outs per company every single day, right? Choose a company, Facebook. Then try to find 12 secondary connections. Doesn't matter if they're data scientists, although that helps. And then say, hey, I'm, uh, I need to talk to you because of all the stuff that we talked about in a second ago. Build out that relationship. Out of the a dozen uh, people you reach out to, don't be annoying, don't spam people, right? Try to create custom messages. You should have one lasting relationship. And then one day, even if you're a student, if you have a connection with Facebook, that person uh, has basically no cost in referring you. So that puts you right through the door, the second door, of getting into a, the, your six-figure data science fang job. Uh, Facundo says, can you share that drive? I certainly will. I'm going to share it with uh, my, uh, my patrons on Discord first, and then I'm going to share it with the rest of you in a week. Um, so if you wanted to contribute to the Patreon, uh, it's a good way to, uh, to get this Google Doc. Sharon says, basic rules, Con uh, confident to approach and not acting like a bot. I might try to get an internship with this. Good idea. Uh, hey, Will, Will's here. This man speaks with so much truth. Will, you're on this Google Doc now. This is your email. Um, cold emails with Will. Thanks for showing up, bro. So, th so the most important part is uh, be honest with yourself. Grow with a sense that you are uh, developing a relationship with yourself first and foremost, right? If you have, if you find yourself in the constant day-to-day -day making excuses for why I don't want to exercise today, all right? Why, you can say, make the same about, I don't want to brush my teeth, right? You can say anything, I don't want to get out of bed. What's the point? It's the pandemic. All right? Making excuses for yourself about what is out of your control is dumb, right? There's still excuses and you can't control them. If you truly don't feel well, there might be something to it of maybe trying to talk to someone or getting professional help, but anything beyond um, truly not feeling like yourself anymore is an excuse. Grow beyond that. Stay to it. Stick to a 66 days agenda and do not falter when you're trying to build something. You're trying to become a data scientist. You're trying to get six figures. Hey, you can do it any way you want. You don't have to be a data scientist. As long as you're building out, uh, carving out a path for yourself, and hopefully someone like me who can help you carve it out, you are gonna be something amazing in two months. And I can guarantee it. So, how long was that? Oh, it's only been an hour. Um, well, 
I'll stay for like 10 more minutes for Q&A. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I think you guys appreciated this last time. I'm going to go through my uh, YouTube st studio to show you guys uh, how I'm performing. <clears throat> And then I'm gonna uh, try to fix some of the uh, <laughs> try to fix some of the copyright claims from Joma's from playing Joma's video. Sorry, Joma's uh, music from last time because uh, that's annoying. So yeah, it's uh, it's growing. I was only fifteen hundred earlier uh, this week. So in terms of subscribers, been about twenty a day. 20 a day uh, for the last three days. And then it was like 20 a day for the last three days. That's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm starting to see a trend. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> um, I think it's because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I comment to Graham's videos. Um, and, then, and then I get a ton of uh, bump from that. Uh, Will says, keep your emails short and sweet. Oftentimes it's short emails that cut through the noise. <coughs> make them look like the letter F. Hey, that's a cool, that's a really cool tip. Make your emails look like the letter F. <clears throat> um, sorry for coughing right in the mic. So when I come over here, ooh, here's a new video I'm gonna put out in the next two days or something. Probably tomorrow. Um, uh, so I need a copyright claim, see details. So all of these freaking um, <laughs> Joma <laughs> songs, how do I, how do I do all? All right, just trim it out. Hit mute the song. How to mute it. Remove all songs. Mute all songs when, mute all sound when song plays. Mute. Oh, and it's gonna take forever. Okay. Um, Sharon says, everyone needs to motivation on Monday so that they come to your channel. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mondays, am I right? So this is gonna take forever. Rain check, rainy days, ricochet, different sky. Um, I, okay, well, uh, just because you guys got me talking, I am thinking about doing this exact same thing on my channel. Uh, I think it's going to be good for growth because Joma's doing it and he hasn't put out a video and I remember when he was like, half a million subscribers, and now he's almost up to a million. And he hasn't made any videos yet, so it works for him. Um, so I'm thinking about doing it. Uh, my girlfriend's making an excellent animation where I'm like looking around, meatballs sleeping on the floor. I think it'll be cute. I'll play lo-fi. Apparently I'm not, I, I can't monetize it because Joma just plays like copyrightable music all the time. I wonder if that video is monetized at all. Anyway, um, I, I'm always remiss to end the uh, the chat right now because there's so many concurrent views. So I'm gonna say it's up to you guys. You guys have a free mentorship right now. Whatever you guys wanna talk about, I'm here. I'm also gonna plug the fact that uh, if you want to see me be silly, I am trying to get bigger on Twitch. If you want to go to Twitch and follow me there, I will put a uh, comment of it right in the live chat. You can watch me react Lucky. to myself. The tongue, the, yeah, the tongue helps. <laughs> Shoot. Maybe, maybe oh. draw a real animal <laughs> next time. This I only had hardwares this time. The carnivore was the easiest. This is my birthday. Uh, I want to show my favorite part. Oh, Unless someone has a question. I I would it Shruti so says, bad. thank you for your videos. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, thank okay. you, Shruti. <laughs> Shruti, you give so much and you ask for so little. Thank you. We really appreciate you. Um, Shaboom says, without coaching, you have to go through a lot of pain because what happens, your mind wanders, so we have to trick your mind to stick to a single resource. So true. It is really hard to stick to uh, a single resource because your brain does want to like do a bunch of stuff. Honestly, I'm the same, right? You need something that keeps you um, 
grounded, honestly. <laughs> this is, uh, is NordVPN. Oh, how did you get it? <laughs> so. Dies Diego. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the best door up drawing I've ever seen. Uh, talking about a, a Twitch, any comments on Cyberpunk set 2077? No. The, new, new things are happening, and I'm just like sitting here like, ah, oh, cool. Uh, I wish I had more thoughts about um, Cyberpunk. I'm probably going to get it and play it. Might be fun. Francisco says, another great stream. Thank you. Yeah, I'm probably going to just... Uh, I'm probably just gonna come back at 2 p.m. So, uh, come back if you want the boss mode. This is just how I would uh, fast track myself if I had more than an hour and a half per day. Uh, ver and also, I'm gonna cover if you just had a full time job committed to trying to get a six figure offer in eight weeks, which is what I did in the beginning of this year. Uh, I'm also gonna cover exactly how to do that uh, as <laughs> basically as fast as physically possible. So, if you want to see that, join me then. Uh, but for now, but not for forever. Is that my catchphrase? I'll see you guys next time. Peace.